But for us, if you really want to understand, especially for me, it's kind of real simple. We are in love with this land because this land loves us. And it's not like to say it's kind of a romantic thing. It's something real. But when you turn it into an environmental point of view, it is we are part of an ecosystem. If you take us out, like you've taken us out for the last 500 years, look what has happened to this earth, this part of the earth, since you took us out of that role of being in line with the environment. And now, all of a sudden, in 1990, yes, the Indian uprising was measured by what happened in 1990 with the native people in this country. But what you fail to really see is why I came out of the closet.
those of you that aren't from Canada may not be aware of it, uh, was the construction of a dam across the Pagan Nation's territory, which had a very uh, devastating impact on the people there in the territory. And it led to a court case, which is referred to as the Old Man Dam case, which confirmed that the federal government has authority in terms of environmental assessments in certain terms, federal, what they call federal subject areas, meaning fisheries, navigable rivers, and Indians and lands reserved for Indians, uh, which is mentioned in Canada's Constitution. That uh, case has been used by a lot of environmental groups, including those in Alberta, to argue that the federal government should be taking a stronger role in ensuring that there isn't maldevelopment occurring in the provinces where the environment is concerned, that there should be better processes for dealing with these types of project, projects. And the uh, person that I'd like to uh, introduce is somebody that uh, did take action in defending their territory. It was during a time here in Canada in 1990 where tensions were running high between Aboriginal peoples and other Canadians. Um, there was a situation going on in Mohawk territory, what's known in uh, Mohawk country as the Gulf Crisis. That's uh, G O L F. But that uh, situation was uh, was going on, and as I say, tensions are running high amongst uh, Aboriginal people across the country who shared similar concerns about land use conflicts and government uh, negotiation process is not resolving these issues. And the person that I'd like to uh, introduce tonight, and, um, I'm very glad that, that he's here, and uh, this opportunity is here, is uh, Milton Bournemouth. Mm -hmm. Milton has uh, been charged with a number of offenses which uh, relate to his actions in defending his territory. And he's uh, He's taken a very strong stand and one that I admire him for because it takes a lot of courage uh, when you're an individual facing down development processes and particularly when you know that they're morally and legally wrong and that uh, you have you can't stand by and uh, watch it happen without doing something. So with that I'd like to ask Milton if he'd like to come up and speak to us here tonight. <laughs> Especially for me, it's kind of real simple. 
we are in love with this land because this land loves us. And it's not like to say it's kind of a romantic thing, it's something real. But when you turn it into an environmental point of view, it is, we are part of an ecosystem. If you take us out, like you've taken us out for the last 500 years, look what has happened to this earth, this part of the earth, since you took us out of that role of being in line with the environment. And now, all of a sudden, in 1990, yes, the Indian uprising was measured by what happened in 1990 with the Native people in this country. But what you fail to really see is why I came out of the closet to explain exactly that us Indians who live in this kind of situation today cannot be continuously being blamed on alcohol, on being because we don't understand English, or because we're these kind of Indians that just want to sing and dance and, you know, do and pray and do all this kind of stuff. We have a major role, and for people in the environmental movement have got to realize that we are not going to be disruptive in this joining of us sitting at your table to discuss exactly how we can become equally and most importantly productive to the environmental process. The Alberta government right now is very afraid of my position because I've never fought my position on the reason of me being an Indian. I fought it because of the social issues, social problems that have come out of development in our territories. I mean, all you got to look at is the Northern Flood Agreement in Manitoba and make the connection that when you take away part of our lifestyle and reroute it, you know, yes, you may think all oh, the poor animals are having a hard time. Well, the hey, us poor Indians have been having a real hard time. And you've been playing us in roles as to be, you know, some kind of tape, kind of patriotic way, you know, to say, well, let's invite the Indians because, you know, we feel sorry for them. You cannot feel sorry for us. What you have to do is you have to accept us as being a vital link in an ecosystem. However you can do that, part of the main issue is that you've got to understand our desire that we have and that the way we can express it. Yes, they call me a militant Indian because I got up and fought, but I wasn't fighting for the reason of fight. I was fighting for because I wanted to maintain and continue to be in line with an ecosystem. That's how I understand it to be. I don't know any other way to all of a sudden, because if I picked up the ABCs and started to use the technical terms about saying who I am, then what it does do, it's like a bear all of a sudden putting pants on. Because then some of you might say, well, he's not really the kind of bear that we knew him to be. He's wearing pants now. <laughs> so I have to maintain and be this Aboriginal person regardless. Yes, people use me at every you know, joke or in, in any line about, you know, how exactly, you know, what all of a sudden I've become. But I did not become something on my own. Somebody came into my world and disrupted it. Now it's taken me a few generations to all of a sudden come out, not as Milton Bourne would do, but as this person that said, hey, that's it. I'm tired of you abusing the one I love. And I'm not ashamed to say love because love and true love means that you will, are willing to die for this love that you have. And that's what the Indian people have always been. They have always been dying But then the funny thing about it, which is real ironic, is that some of our people have turned, I mean, you guys have your own Hitlers, your own, you know, uh, Jimmy Bakers, your own, you know, your own, your own people that have messed up in your world. Well, in my world, too, we have our own so-called, like I've always called over Berkeley, around Hitler because of his perpetration of telling the people, oh, this is what I'm going to do for my people. To me, I say he's continually kind of using, because in this statement that he used a few weeks ago about saying there's a boarding school syndrome. Well, to briefly explain what the boarding school syndrome is, real simple, is I'm a victim of that syndrome, and I choose not to use that as an excuse anymore. The thing was is that, yes, they beat my elders, and they got them into where now all of a sudden my elders have turned around and said, okay, watch us, we can beat our next generation better than you can. It's kind of like trying to show your oppressor that yes, we're doing a good job. So I follow that, yes, we do have that problem. Some of our leaders have become that way. But the bottom line about this battle is that this province here, because you have people from different parts of the country, the world here, which I don't know too much about, 
But if you do what you do in South Africa, and you all say that you support it, I see no all you support the position of apartheid, saying that that government there was oppressing its people. How come you cannot say that about Canada? Alberta has defied the highest court in this country in the Old Man River Dam case. It defied the Supreme Court decision that, said, that stated that natives had to be considered as being a vital link into the environmental assessment process. When that came about, there was a federal environmental assessment that was, that was done on, within my community <coughs> in this dam. At the end of that decision, there was a number one recommendation that stated that the Old Man River Dam should be dismantled. But this government here thumbed its nose at the highest court in the law. And the funny thing about it is that here you've got this country that's just throwing this real, supposed to be high law aside, and it's trying to tell me that I should listen to its law. How can you expect to tell your children to do one thing and go off and do another thing, and then expect your children to grow up right? So for me, it's kind of like has and will be until we show exactly that it has become a government that is out of control. The Minister of uh, Finance, Jim Denning, yesterday made a statement on the economy of Alberta and it stated that the economy is in good shape because they had cut the budget by $900 million. That $900 million, which the taxpayer in this country doesn't realize or in this province, is that they're paying a bill about the mistakes that they had made, this government had made prior, not only in Novotel, but on the Old Man River Dam issue and about the smeltering issue that was here before. So the thing is, is the taxpayer has been sidetracked again to continuously let this out-of-control government continue to go. Yes, us people in this province can do something about it, or us native people who are here, but it's countries like China and Europe and the rest of the world that can point fingers at this government and say, we have enough information. You don't need to study us anymore. There are laws there that they have broken that are so vital to the development of how people are supposed to respect the country. When you go against your highest law, then what does that tell you? That should tell you something like it told me. It says, well, hey, screw you. If you're going to screw your own system, hey, then don't worry about me. I want to do the same. And it should work both ways. But then, again, the example is that they can do it and I can't. So for me, it's been a struggle that I've never needed no one to tell me how to do it. I know that there's only one way, and that's to go and remember who the enemy is. The people ain't the enemy. White people ain't the enemy. You know, all these other things that we use as excuses to get to the real issue. The real issue is that we have a process, a government, and if it doesn't follow that process, it's up to us to ensure that one way or the other that we either expose it for what it is or we do what I'm doing now, and that's to fight back until one day that they hopefully will come to a point where they realize that something has to be done, some kind of sacredness, so that us children who are supposed to be learning from these people begin to see what's being right so that we can grow up to be just as right as they think we're supposed to be. But my way is that I am not a medicine man and I'm not a chief. I'm just this person who comes from my way of life that refuses to take the blame for what has happened up to this point in time. But I will be assessed from here on to the end of my time as to what I do about it. So for me, it's dying time. Real simple. I'd rather die fighting and having my enemy by the neck rather than have, having me hold on to a bottle or abusing my own people or stuff like that. That's not how I'm going to die. I'm going to die honorably. And you know what? People don't like that because they're afraid to hear that kind of strength. But when you love something and it's been misinterpreted so bad, I have to come out because I have to tell people wait a minute, we are an awesome race of people. We have a lot to teach. And we want to teach. But before that, we have to do what is right. And if it means that we have to discipline the enemy in a physical way, what is wrong with that? I dare any one of you to go into the forest where I come from and go and try and tell a bear, get out of my way. What is he going to say? Oh, excuse me. No. That's the natural law. And you cannot use that passing this law on us, to keep telling us that this is what we have to do. And it's not a violent way, and it's not one that wants to be like disruptive. No, we have to show the enemy, if we're going to fight a good battle, the enemy has to know how strong its opponent is. 
If the enemy knows that you're weak, then people are going to get hurt. Processes are going to get trampled. So this is the part that I know best in an honorable way, is that you show your enemy, hey, I'm just as strong as you are, and I don't fear you. And if it means dying, hey, that's not a problem. I'd rather die honorably than dying your slave or dying for your diseases. And that's nothing wrong, but that's the part that we, as people across this country, have been misinterpreted. We're not fighting because we want to be bad. We're fighting because we love our homeland. And after 500 years, I'm a good example that all that has been done is that we are willing to say, hey, let's sit down at the table and let's talk. Isn't it enough time to realize that we are not like how you treat the bears in the zoos or the people in there? You can never put natives in zoos like they try to put us on reservations. At least we know how to open the door on our own. We know how to come out. But then the way we've come out is what is the problem today. But all I wanted to do in 1990 was that, you know, people had told me and had kind of told me in ways that, you know, money was going to save us Indian people. Then they came and told us that God was going to save us, you know, kind of thing. Well, both of these things has destroyed our lives. But you know what, all of a sudden in 1990, I found an answer. And it was a good one. And it's called the environment. Because the environment isn't prejudice. The water does not care about brown or white or whatever, but it needs us. And for me, it's the first time that I could finally really say what I need, like how I could come here today and have no shame and try and tell you things about, you know, oh, flying in the skies. So, no, I can tell you something that we both understand, and that's what development does when you are careless about it and when you end up destroying and altering a system that was not made by us. So as, as a person myself, the only thing that I'm going to continuously do is to continually show the enemy that it has an honorable opponent. Because if you make the enemy aware that you're honorable, maybe less people will get hurt. Maybe they'll be willing to sit down and talk. But I mean, it's a start. But at least the answer for native people is not a whole answer, but it is just another way that we can sit down and talk. And that's through the environment position. So for me, I owe a lot to at least giving me a platform. Otherwise, I would still be, I'd probably be laying somewhere else because the environment hasn't, did not come at a time where maybe I could have had more advantage like the people before me. So, you know, in my own way, I have finally found a way that I can become productive and become part of the process of hopefully that we can do something for the future. But, you know, like, I, you know, my only way is that I know that I can show exactly what native people are really all about, is that we're all an awesome race of people. And all we want to do is show you that. And if it has to be the way I've done it, then so be it. And if we have to hurt feelings, then so be it. Because we've got to quit being personal about it. Because the trees and the water are our real bosses. Those are the ones that we really have to listen to. Why should we listen to our own personal opinions about what we think? It's not what we think, it's about what we're going to continuously do. And for us, the Native people can be a major role into where the environment movement is going to go into the future. And I hope, and I'm going to try my darndest to ensure that it sets off on the right foot, that the environment movement and Native people walk side by side, and that we don't become your slaves and your little <coughs> kind of doing experiments and assessments on us. We have to be equal in this process, because the water is running out, trees are getting less. And all these fine things that the development has produced are starting to come to us and telling us that even they're saying margarine now is bad for you, wieners are bad for you. And here when they first came out, they said, oh, our scientists check them out, they're all good. Now we're living the effects of it. How many more effects are going to come in that may destroy our ability to fight? So it is an honor for me to come here and at least express and lay down my heart to you as only I know best. But the thing about it is that the fight isn't over yet. The enemy is right today is making plans while we sit here and talk. The thing is, is what are we going to do when we go out of the door? I know what I'm going to do, but I don't expect you to follow. But I expect you maybe one day in time that we all become side by side and we fight the same enemy. It's not us, it's not prejudice. It's that we will have to realize that this enemy is bent on one thing. Never, never, never forget that the government does not want us to be equal. 
it's only up to us to make sure that they remember that we are seeing this thing that we the only way we do is by we join hands and we become one with each other in whatever battle it is. So maybe people can become a very integral part to where the environmental movement is going to become. And I don't think you should fear us, and I don't think you should continuously patronate us about how the movements are all about. So I go to court tomorrow. I've been fighting this court case for four years, and I can't continue to fight it anymore. I've run out of money, I've run out of you know, ways to continually fight. It's a battle that is real hard to fight, but it's one that I've taken as far as I can. And I don't expect people to, to you know, come on and say, oh, well, we're going to take a little further. No, in, in the battle, you've got to learn to fight for so long, and then you've got to learn, that, well, we have to go to another level of this battle. So for me, the next level, I hope, is to continue to see this kind of a process, including Native people, in a more serious way, so that we can get together and put our homework together, because it is going to become more stronger in some of the positions that we're trying to make for this so-called biodiversity kind of experiment, that the development and the less development people are trying to get together to deal with. So if anything else, I can be your strongest ally, or I can be your best ally. One or the other, it doesn't matter to me, because for me the bottom line is that I've chosen my path and I have no excuses for it. But at least I know one thing, is I'm going to die on my own terms, and that's freedom. And that I only cherish because the Creator has given me that. And I don't need to put feathers in, you know, where there's good old Indian stuff that people think Indians are supposed to do. You know, I'm an Indian, and I ain't arguing about it. I just know that I'm going to show you the best side of us, that we are strong, and that we are an awesome race of people, and we have something to bring a big importance to this understanding of the environment. So until the scientific part shows me how they make that frog come alive, I will believe in the scientific part. So I really am appreciative of your time, and I know that, you know, that, you know people like me, you know, continue to ramble on because we, we never, you know, write our states when down because it's always in here. Heart is full, it's got a lot of energy. But I'll show you the rest of the field. So I really appreciate you giving me the time to talk. And I hope that you are honest about including Native people and the aspect of the environmental movement. And for the people that come from different parts of the country, please go home and tell them that Canada is an apartheid country until they deal with its Native people like they did with the South African people. Then we can become a very strong force in the movement of better this plan. So I really thank you for the opportunity.